My friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. I'm doing great. Scott Michaels is doing great. It's a little hot and humid here. We are literally at the Oklahoma state line right here. And we have a great day because we are going to stop off and visit quite a few interesting sites along our day today. And uh, Scott doesn't even know what we're gonna do today. These are mostly all things that I wanna see and I'm gonna kinda surprise him. So, Days with Jordan the Lion, dearly departed with Scott Michaels, and you all begins right now. I'm sorry we couldn't take you through Arkansas with us again, but you saw it once before, so we're starting in Oklahoma today. Let's go visit an old television icon. We're seeing all kinds of roadside America and they, you know, in Oklahoma they have uh, medicinal marijuana and we were passing by one of these places we just noticed they have Alvin and the Chipmunks <laughs> out front. And I grew up being a big fan of Alvin and the Chipmunks so I got to look at them. I never saw any of the movies and when I grew up I quit following them so I didn't know what kind of path they took. I didn't know that they were living out in Oklahoma now but Alvin, Simon and Theodore out here. All right, later, Alvin. We'll do. I mean, we won't do. Scott, you have no idea where we are going, do you? No, it's a big surprise. I'm looking forward to it, I no, think. No jumping off the bridge, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> do a Billy Joe. <laughs> Billy Joe McAllister? So we made it out to our location. It's actually on someone's private property, but they're nice enough. I told Scott, I said, I think they're gonna be cool about this because it's uh, something that probably a lot of people come and ask about, but they actually have a headstone in their backyard to a television icon. <laughs> do, 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 Oh my gosh. That's right. If you don't know it, <laughs> <laughs> Wait till we get out there. You can see the headstone is right there. Scott, do you like surprises? Do you like my surprises? This is a good one. This is very good. <laughs> right here by the... What? Now, there's a, you know, there's some speculation that this is not really the Mr. Ed. It's a pretty big investment for one. Yeah, it used to be just like a wooden cross, I guess, out here. Now they have a full-on, says, dedicated to the loving memory of Mr. Ed on Sunday, August 26, 1990, is the result of a heartfelt fundraised effort by the people of Northeastern Oklahoma and Tulsa radio station Z104 FM. Same. Says, according to national media reports, Mr. Ed moved to Oklahoma in the late 1960s after a successful Hollywood career. Mr. Ed continued to entertain and bring joy to many Oklahomans Finally retiring in this very field, Mr. Ed passed away February 22nd, 1979. May his memory live long. Now some people online are saying that this is not the actual Mr. Ed we saw on TV. That this was a golden Palomino that they used for photos and that the Mr. Ed we all knew retired on his trainer and owner's property and was cremated and scattered out there. But, who's to say? I mean, how many times have I been to a grave like Jesse James and Doc Holl all these gunfighters and Mr. Ed and Elvis all have faked their death or have, have multiple headstones or, you know, there's always some crazy story behind their grave, but the people went to all the trouble of doing a headstone out here for a horse that was Mr. Red, whether he was on the TV show or not. He portrayed Mr. Ed. Who knows what the real story really is? 
We very, just read the real story. Yeah, That's well. That's the real story. <laughs> very cool as that the... Uh, it's the only Mr. Ed Grape I've ever been to. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, there is no other. And I've I've went out and vlogged where he was born. That's in uh, that's in the Valley in Los Angeles. But kind of cool to see the official marker that they say is Mr. Ed's grave. The real Mr. Ed. I do know after the show went off the air that the... Actor Alan Young would still go out and visit him all the time and go ride him. And he remembered him and was very responsive when Alan would come out to visit. That was Wilbur. Oh, really? Yeah, in the you had a friend that used to see Mr. Ed going to work in the morning? Yeah. That's great. She lived right by that school that Ricky Nelson went to, Ricky and David Nelson went to. And at the end of that road, she'd see, see the horse trailer coming in in the morning. Now, apparently the person who said that this was not the actual Mr. Ed was Alan Young himself. He said this was a photo double named Pumpkin and that Pumpkin was brought out here and then eventually euthanized, but that uh, Lester Hilton was the owner and trainer of the Mr. Ed that he said he worked with. We're gonna hit several stops in Tulsa. Should be a lot of fun. We have a cool little stop here off Route 66. I want to show Scott. I know he'll enjoy this. I've actually been here once before when I did my Outsiders movie locations. We're in the town of Catoosa and we're stopping at the Blue Whale of Catoosa. There it is. Oh yeah, the famous Blue Whale. This was an old fishing hole. People used to, actually I mean swimming hole. <laughs> People used to come out here and crawl through this thing and swim in this lake. They don't, I believe, allow swimming in here now, but people still come out and check it out. It's got a little baseball cap on. Let's go walk through it. teeth and the tongue <laughs> and here you can see they had steps and like a slide you can slide out into the lake same here And you climb up that ladder. And they also had a little ladder for if you wanted to jump off the tail. Or I guess jump off right there. Now things all high tech and you know, you don't really see places like this quite as much anymore. Just a fun old novelty basic idea. Just thought it'd be nice to stop by and check it out once again. And look what else they have on the grounds. Tables are little like whales and barrels. Scott Michaels just walked in. So that's the other thing I was going to show you on the grounds. <laughs> a big arc. You can't go in it anymore. They have signs all over it that say, feel free to take pictures and everything, but it is not stable. And it says arc right there in lights. But you can look inside of it. Here was the doorway. Yeah, there's their disclaimer sign. So apparently you used to be able to go in there. And then look at this, all the mushrooms that are now in 
complete decay, but they still look cool. A little mushroom forest here. We got more to see today though, here in Tulsa. So we're gonna be moving along. Jackrabbit Trading Post is only 959 miles from here in Arizona. Also pretty cool to see this, the Will Rogers Memorial Highway Old Mail Route, about a half mile southwest of the site of Fort Spunky, a relay station on the Old Star Mail Route between St. Louis and California after the war between the states. Catoosa was founded as the post office with John Gunter Scrimshire an uncle of Will Rogers as postmaster. Nice. Let's go see some more Tulsa. Here's Memorial Park Cemetery. All the way in the back of the cemetery and section 28, Garden of the Apostles. So we found a matching photo online that shows this mausoleum back here. Quite a bit of looking, but we finally found a section of his family members. Like over here we found Reverend Samuel Earl Kinnison, beloved husband, father, and then we had Kevin Earl Kinnison playing up yonder. His brother Bill is still alive, but we came to visit the great Sam Kinnison. It says in another time and place he would have been called prophet. Samuel Burl Kinnison, December 8th, 1953 to April 10th, 1992. Yes, indeed, much like his father and his father's father, he was also a reverend at one point and was married. Marriage didn't work out and he was told he was no longer welcome to be a reverend in the church he was in anymore once he got a divorce. So turned to a life of comedy and Heard a couple of great podcasts with the guy that became his best friend when he moved. You see, he had moved to Houston to do comedy, became friends with Bill Hicks, Carl LeBove, and then moved out to Hollywood and started going to the comedy store and got a job parking cars at the comedy store with Carl LeBove. Carl said Sam always had a dream for as long as he could remember of him performing on The Tonight Show. And he didn't know how it would happen. He wasn't doing comedy, but he... He could just always see somehow he had this dream of him on stage and him looking over to Johnny Carson in the chair and Johnny laughing and pounding on the desk and eventually after some time at being at the comedy store and becoming an accomplished comedian he ended up on the Tonight Show accomplishing his dream but not as a comedian. He was on there doing a cover of an Elvis Presley song. Are you lonesome tonight? Besides being an amazing comedian Sam wasn't great actor also. He was originally who they wanted to be Al Bundy on Married with Children. He ended up eventually making a an amazing cameo on Married with Children where he is a uh, he is basically an angel sent to help Al see the errors of his life. And then of course he was just amazing in his breakout role in Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School as Professor Turgeson where he rips the desk off and throws the lid across the room <laughs> and Rodney Dangerfield says, uh, Professor Turgeson, he's a great man. He really seems to care about what I have no idea. That was because Rodney had seen Sam performing at the comedy store, liked him and put him in his up and comer special and helped break Sam Kinison as a comedian. Sam was one of the most influential comedians of the 80s absolutely goes down in history as being one of those guys that people had never seen anyone like him. The screaming and the analogies, it was just groundbreaking and he had quite a bit of a problem with drugs and alcohol but at the end of his life he started to reform his 
life and was reforming himself and was on his way out to perform a show and was hit head on by a drunk driver, underage drunk driver. Sad to see someone's life end so young. 1953 to 1992. I wasn't even 40 years old yet. Now a little further into the cemetery, we find this grave. Leon Russell. Piano extraordinaire. Look, his headstone's even in the shape of a piano. Grand piano. Somebody's left a top half for him over here under the bench. Claude Russell Bridges. When my life is over, remember when we were together, we were alone and I was singing this song for you. They even put the keys so he can keep playing. And then just ahead of us, right here, we have another one we wanted to see. And right over here all by himself, the great Roy Clark. He is in a class all by himself, as you can see. That is a beautiful headstone and gravestone that's together from humble beginnings to legendary entertainer. Then look at that, a portrait of him. He's buried out here because he lived out here. Roy Linwood Clark, the host of Hee Haw, <laughs> and Roy Halsey and Myrtle Halsey from the Beverly Hillbillies. You got his autograph right there. Also the... Uh, First entertainer in Branson to put his name on a theater, become a mainstay out there. But he was the leader of and host of Hee Haw with Roy Clark or uh, with Buck Owens for 27 years till the show went off the air. 1997, I believe it was. Fantastic recording career, country music entertainer, member of the Country Music Hall of Fame. The Grand Ole Opry, television star, <laughs> he really did it all. My favorite Roy Clark song is uh, Do You Believe This Town? That is such a great song. Man, they really did him justice. His grave says, the next chance you get, do something nice for somebody. Say good day, hold a door open, and don't wait around for a thank you. You don't need it. And because of you, that person will go out and do something nice for somebody. And then that person will go out and do something nice for someone else. And this whole world can wind up doing nice things for each other. And we can be the ones that start it. It takes all of us working together to get things done. No one does it alone. Only one did, and I'm not that strong. Let's start it. Here's to love. It's still the best. And then one more that we're looking for out here. Scott Michaels. Just over there, trying to help me cover ground. <laughs> and right over here we have Billy Jack Wills. Right next to the great Bob Wills. Country musician. Deep within my heart lies a melody. Bob Wills and the Playboys. Now Scott's over where Bob Wills is. Now where I am, if you come right behind, is 
Bob's brother, fiddle player Johnny Lee Wills. Also, Western Swing. All right, we're off to get some food, and there's a little historical information here at the food place. Wow, look at that Tulsa thing for Route 66. That is crazy. Never seen that before. All right, Scott and I made it to Hank's Hamburgers. I found this because Waylon Jennings said this was his favorite hamburger spot, and he and his wife, Jesse Coulter, spent their 21st wedding anniversary here. And apparently they have a lot of pictures inside. Serving Tulsa since 1949. Tulsa's best. Route 66. Old fashioned style. This is great. The uh, photo of Waylon and Jesse is with uh, those two windows over there in the background. They're right there. That's so cool. That's right there at those windows. And then there's a picture of him sitting at the table here eating. Look at that. Hank's the best hamburgers in the world. I don't think you can uh, beat that. He said it right there himself. The Waylon and Jesse booth is available, so Scott and I are going to take it. Go ahead, Scott, do the honors. <laughs> <laughs> there they are, sitting in the corner. There they are, kissing right there. there. Waylon And there's Waylon hugging him at the counter, right here behind us. With those windows there. Standing right here where we are. Completely unbelievable to me that we come to a hamburger joint and Scott has been eating hamburgers every day of this trip and he doesn't get one here. What the heck, dude? I'm delirious from being in the Tulsa, Oklahoma. Cemetery. No respect for Waylon, man. In the heat, in the heat. I'm excited, man, to, to see where his favorite hamburger joint was. I can't wait. That is a monster burger, but I am not gonna eat the top and I'm gonna try and not eat the bottom also. I just wanna try what the burger tastes like. I just noticed if you look in the tile, that blue tile where they're kissing, it's still here under the paint. I know it's a goofy little thing, but it is right there. Oh man, that is stellar. For a Wayland fan, absolutely worth the stop eating here. We got somewhere else we gotta go. So right here at the Tulsa Union Depot, look what we have. This is the center of the universe. I just notice as you stand here, it echoes. Listen to that. Listen to how different it sounds when you stand on the center of the universe and when you stand on top, it echoes. Well, my friends, thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.